Shalom friends and partners, uh, wanted to greet you uh, once again by way of video. This is uh, Brent Johnson, director of Jacob's Hope, and uh, Wade Clark, our missionary associate here in our Springfield offices behind the, the camera today, and uh, doing a great job. I uh, wanted to just say thank you, or in Hebrew, todah rabah, thank you very much for your continued support, your continued prayers, uh, your continued heart uh, for the Jewish people uh, in Israel and around the world. Again, the promise of I will bless those that bless thee uh, continues to manifest uh, in our ministry uh, and in our efforts and you play a vital role in that. So thank you again for your prayers, uh, your financial support, and just your heartfelt uh, support uh, to reach out to the Jewish people around the world. We so appreciate it. Wanted to just bring to you uh, some thoughts uh, that we're coming into the spring seasons with uh, the spring feasts, uh, which are very key uh, to Jewish uh, life. Uh, and ministry. And so uh, this particular time uh, is uh, not one of the Levitical 23 uh, feasts commanded by the Lord, but a tradition that is celebrated by Jewish people around the world, and it's called the Feast of Purim, or Pur, the Feast of Lots. Uh, and it had to do with Esther, uh, Queen Esther, and uh, you'll find her in the Bible, a whole chapter, uh, on her and the Jewish people, the captivity, and her uncle Mordecai, those two people playing a vital role. Also learn about uh, a, a, a wicked man named Haman who was determined to annihilate uh, the Jewish people uh, on the uh, 13th day of Adar. They were going to, uh, a, a, a declaration had come out uh, from uh, the king after some trickery uh, by uh, Haman to destroy and annihilate the Jewish people. But the Lord divinely intervened on the Jewish people's behalf. And it was through prayer and through fasting that the Lord made this possible. So I just wanted to read just a, a couple of portions of Scripture out of the book of Esther. And when they do celebrate the, the Feast of Purim at the end of this month, the first two days of March this year, uh, it's a festivity, and they read the entire book of Esther, but I'm just going to read just a couple of portions today. Uh, in chapter 4, uh, beginning at verse 12, it says, So all the words of Esther were told to Mordecai. Then Mordecai told them to reply to Esther, Do not think that in the king's palace you'll be more likely to escape than all the other Jews. For if you remain silent at this time, Protection and deliverance for the Jews will be ordained from some other place, but you and your father's house shall be destroyed, and who knows if you may have attained royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther replied, sending back to Mordecai, Go gather all the Jews who can be found in Susa, then fast for me, stop eating and drinking for three days." I and my young men will fast likewise. Only then will I dare go to the king, since it's not allowed by law. And if I perish, I perish. Quite a commitment for this young Jewish girl who was queen, yet still needed permission to see the king. Prayer and fasting and encouragement by her uncle to go into the king to intercede on behalf of all of the Jewish people, her people, was a great step of faith and a great step of courage. And it, and it came about because people were willing to pray and fast and seek God's help in this time of need. Uh, Haman, wicked Haman, was a political leader uh, and had issued a decree uh, by the king uh, to annihilate the Jewish people, but there was divine intervention by the Lord Himself on their behalf. And because of that, uh, today there is a celebration among uh, the Jewish people that there was just a time for such a time as this that God would divinely intervene. And 
We thank God for people like you who partner with us for such a time as this to believe that the Lord is divinely intervening still today on behalf of the Jewish people. Not everyone loves the Jewish people. Not everyone has a heart and passion as you do for the Jewish people. But I thank God that you do today. Now, when that decree went out, it meant the annihilation of the Jewish people. But for such a time as this, Mordecai, Queen Esther, and the Jewish people prayed and fast and God intervened on their behalf. I also would like to share with you that in the book of Esther, the name of God is never mentioned. And yet, even though hidden, he is made manifest in the hearts and lives of delivering the Jewish people. Today in celebrations, if you attend a Jewish believing congregation today, you will find plays that take place. People send food portions. Uh, kids will dress up and some of them will dress up as Mordecai. Some of them will dress up as Queen Esther. There's a drama sometimes that's done. Some brave people will actually dress up as Haman and you'll hear the boo boo about Haman and then when Mordecai's name or Esther's name is mentioned there's great cheers and joys because of what God had done on their behalf. They exchange food, uh, they send gifts to the poor and gifts to each other so it's a great time of celebration. So would you celebrate with us today as you consider uh, again just your, your partnership, your prayers, to join with us, the Ministry of Jacob's Hope, to bless the Jewish people around the world. And uh, we will be participating uh, in uh, some of these events during Purim because it's such a special time for young and old alike, a celebration of God's protection, divine protection in the midst of utter destruction. God himself intervened on behalf of the Jewish people. Thank you for your partnership, your prayers, and your intercessions for us here uh, at Jacob's Hope and our ministry and for Jewish people around the world. Shalom, shalom.